All right, so the next important thing we need to talk about is very important programming construct, which you commonly refer to as the functions or procedures. So the functions help uh, us organize our code in the modular form and makes the code manageable. It helps us reduce the redundant code in size, so you do not need to write the code same again and again, the same code again and again. All what you can do is uh, to write a function separately and call the that particular number of instructions or a particular operation again and again as whenever is it needed. And it is easy to maintain because uh, if you have a bug in your program and if it is in the function, so you don't, you just need to fix the function. You do not need to go over the entire program to debug uh, where the um, where the problem is. Okay. So we have been talking about the data, storing data in registers, storing data in memory, retrieving the data from memory and placing it into registers, and, and vice versa. The data could be either in the textual representation, it could be in the form of like a, a video, audio, and the images, anything. So we have been only talking about data so far. But what are the instructions and where are they stored? So the instructions are also a data for the computer, but we store it in, in the memory as well. But for the time being, for the, uh, to distinguish it from the main data, we call the instructions to be stored in the instruction memory. So the memory is same, but let's say that we categorize memory into two different segments, the instruction memory and the data memory. And the instruction memory only holds the instructions um, whatever you write as a software, okay? So let's visualize this as an instruction memory where we have our instructions stored from uh, bottom to top. So whatever you write, so in, in Python or C, you write a code starting from top to bottom, line number one, two, three, four. So assume that line number one, whatever the instruction you write on line number one is stored at the bottom, and two on the top, and so on and so forth, okay? So here, there is another important thing that you need to remember, you will be required to use it very frequently, called program counter, or short for PC, okay? So program counter holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. This is very important, and when we will be discussing hardware, you will see it very frequently, okay? So PC is a register, simply an independent register, which holds the address of the instruction that is going to be executed next, okay? So if PC is pointing to this instruction right now, it means that this instruction is going to execute next, okay? So this is how the compiler or the processor runs instruction um, in, in a sequential manner, one by one. So these are the functions call. So this is a function, let's say its name is foo, and these are the caller. We are calling the same function from different um, locations in, in a program. And this function, which is being called here, is generally referred as callee. Okay? Any question here until this point? This is just a general information. Based on this, we will build up our uh, next knowledge. So here, for example, PC is pointing to this function call. Okay, so this instruction, when this instruction is executed, what do you think PC will jump to? When you write a program in Python, you have the function written somewhere at the top or in other, maybe in other file. And then maybe in line number 10 or 12, for example, you write the function call, where you are calling the function. So what do you assume, actually? So the function, when the function call is executed, the execution terminates at that point and start executing from the function, right? Agreed? So where do you think the function, the PC will jump to? So the PC will jump at this location, which means that the PC again corresponds to the next instruction to be executed. So here PC will jump to this point, which means that the instruction written at this point now onwards will be executed. Okay? Understand? Now after executing these instructions, so PC will keep on incrementing. Okay, so it will execute the first instruction written in a function, 
then the second, and so on and so forth until the end last instruction. Okay, so when the last instruction is executed, it has to return back to the same place where the function was called from. This is the general behavior of function, right? So where do you think the function, uh, the PC will jump back to? A, B, C, D, or E? Hmm? Okay. Anyone? C and you say E. So we have two options. I mean, um, out of five, minimize to two. The C and E. So which one PC will jump to? C or E? Hmm? Ananya? Okay. Yeah, it will jump to C. Why? Because we, I have already mentioned that the addresses are arranged, instructions are arranged from bottom to top. Okay, so the, if the function is called from here, the next instruction to be executed is placed here. Okay, so it should execute the next instruction which is placed at location C. Okay, so how do we actually make a transition back to the location where the function is called from? We need to know the return address and we cannot use the branch instruction. Why? Cannot we use simple BEQX0X0 x0 and the label to jump back? Hmm? Yep. Yeah, you are right, but elaborate, please. We have multiple callers, yes. So if we hard core the label using the branch instruction, it will always jump back to the same location. So which means that we cannot use branch. So what we need to store is when we make a function call, we need to have the address, the instruction of the uh, address of the next instruction is stored somewhere, okay? And also we need to pass the arguments to function or return, we need to have some space, like where are we going to store the argument values or whatever the values the function is returning. Okay, there must be some space where these values are stored. Okay, so as we know, the registers are faster place to hold the data in a computer. So we will be using um, the standard registers that are reserved for dealing with functions. So X10 to X17 are registers which is used for passing the parameter to a function or whatever the function returns, these are stored in these registers, okay? So while you were writing a Python code, what you would assume that whatever argument value we pass, it is, go, uh, it is assigned to the function, it is transferred to the function like this. Uh, if I were to explain it here, So here, for example, you write Python script, let's say x, y, z dot pi. We have a equals one, b equals two, maybe definition func, and let's say x variable and something, and it has return a statement. Return, let's say, um, z equals whatever, z. And then we are making a function call func and passing the argument, let's say three. So when we were discussing introduction to computing the Python course, we assume that this three will be assigned to this variable x, right? And when it returns, it returns some value that may be assigned to a, or whatever it is returning, it is after returning, it should continue the program from this point onwards. Agreed? But how this execution happens behind the scene is, we are not actually passing this value. What we do is, in the processor, what we do is we store this value in a register. Let's say a register x10. So this value three is stored in a register, okay? The processor jump to this location and start executing this instruction onwards. Whenever this value is needed, it goes to this register, 
the processor goes to this register and read the value stored in here. Okay, so this is how the arguments values are passed into a function. Understand? And when it returns, it returns to which location? It must have a address of the next instruction stored. Let's say the next instruction is x equals y times z. So this address of this instruction must be stored somewhere. And it is stored in usually in x1. So x1 is generally used to hold the return address. Return address. Okay? Any question here? So this is what it says. These are the specific registers to deal with the function. So return address is always stored in x1 and the return values or parameters are stored in this block, x10 to x17, any of these, okay? So let's look at the instruction. So this is the instruction that we use to call the function. So JAL, it's called jump and link instruction, is used to jump to the function call. So function name is again, is just a label label of the address where the function is starting from, okay? So it goes to the label where the procedure function starts from while storing the address of the next instruction. So RD corresponds to the place where this instruction PC plus four is stored, okay? So what does RD contains? It's in front of you. So when we are making a function call, PC, we should reserve the address of the next instruction to be executed, okay? Where the program or the processor should be returning back and start, start continuing to execute from, okay? So we should store the address, so that is stored in RD. That corresponds to the X1. We can actually store it in anywhere, but X1 is a standard register where we store the return address for function calls. In your simulator, there are simulator, J is a instruction that you can use for jump. Okay. Now the return address in register, example RA or X1, how can we actually go there with the help of JAL? It does not take a source register. We need another instruction to come back from the function execution. Okay, so JALR is another instruction. So to return from the function, we use JALR. Again, the same format, offset plus RS1. RS1 corresponds to the um, register which holds the return address. And if you do not need to hold the um, address of the next instruction, you just specify X0. Okay. 